Hello everyone, my name is Megan, and today I will be painting a clockwork dragon. All the paints I am going to use are being displayed on the screen now, so if you would like to paint along, please go ahead. First off, I will be priming it black, and I will be using the tap tap technique to do so. Then I will use that technique again to zenithal highlight, which just brings out, uh, in this case, the surfaces and textures and all the details really on the model, which will help me paint it in the long run. Next, I will be applying my first base coat on one third of the patches on the wings. And this first color is chocolate brown, a really nice and rich brown. Next, I will be applying a combination Vallejo orange brown and wood grain, which as you can see, makes a somewhat bright and leaning tw towards the orange side of the spectrum. Uh, not surprisingly, I think. This particular one is my favorite type of leather to paint, just because I think it has more character than the others. And my least favorite type of leather to paint here, we have a base layer of dark sand and Japanese uniform. Um, so it will appear that it does not look good and that's because, well, it's my least favorite, but please trust the process. In the end, everything will look okay, at the very least. Um, if you are following along, please make sure that you paint both sides of each patch the same color, otherwise it will look very strange. Um, another point, uh, please don't stick your finger in wet paint as I just did. Now I am applying flat earth in random blotches all across the chocolate brown patches. And this will give it a good amount of depth and texture on an otherwise not super textured model. And you want to focus most on the raised areas, which would get more texture due to uh, wear and tear from the flapping of the wings. Now I am applying even more texture along the tops of the raised areas and the edges of the wing to give it the appearance of having been torn slightly through use. And I think this goes a long way in giving the model an even more 3D appearance, which is kind of strange to say considering it is literally 3D. We will unite all of the highlights using a wash of Vallejo smoke. Um, and it may look like a mistake when you first do it, but believe me, this technique works really well. One of the reasons I love painting this model so much, um, I've actually painted it three times for sale on Etsy, is that I just love to paint leather and there is a lot of leather on this one. So if you're practicing as a new painter, you could start here uh, in learning how to paint leather, considering the leather areas are so large and easy to add details to. Now I am adding a second wash of smoke just in the recessed areas to increase the contrast between uh, flat areas that would be catching the light and recessed areas that would appear to be in shadow. This is a fairly simple method that unfortunately does not work that well on uh, skin. <laughs> Now we are covering the majority of the yellowish leather using Vallejo Dark Sand, which you may notice is a color that would be commonly used on these wings. A wash of Vallejo Flat Earth is then applied. Um, one thing to make sure of when you're applying washes is to not let it pool anywhere because when the wash dries there will be too much pigment in that area and it will be really obvious. So you can use your finger or a spare brush to just absorb the liquid, preventing 
blotchy patches on your model. Our second wash is with Vallejo Smoke, and this is going to cover the entirety of each leather patch. While I apply this wash, I'd just like to uh, let you know that I also have an ulterior motive for picking this as my first video. Um, I just love dragons. I feel like they kind of epitomize D&D, and I love painting larger models. Uh, definitely not because small details are hard, but because I think they're just cooler. Our next color is Vallejo Orange Brown, and we're going to, once again, just apply it in random splotches all over the orange-brown orange slash wood grain underneath. This is essentially the same process that we used earlier. Uh, and these techniques uh, can be applied to smaller models such as uh, leather armor, a leather pouch, uh, other things. Uh, following the same process as the dark brown leather, I will once again be stippling on some wear and tear on the raised parts of this orangish leather. I, I don't know about anyone else, but I think this is oddly satisfying. Usually I would apply weathering on the body as well, but I wanted this video to be shorter and focus more on just painting leather. So that's what I'm gonna do. Vallejo wood grain is applied to blend the highlights together while not erasing the work we've already done. Uh, pro camera work, have everything off screen. Someday, I won't have the wings in the way. Okay, so we're moving on to the body. I am applying a base coat of orange brown because copper is somewhat translucent, or at least the copper that I have is. Um, it is good to base coat copper and gold with brown or even just mix them because <clears throat> at their core, they are just uh, shiny browns. Now, the amount of time it took me to notice the missing antler is truly incredible. I just want everyone to know that you don't have to be super observant or coordinated or have spatial reasoning in order to paint miniatures. Anyone can paint, just uh, have fun while you're doing it. That's the most important part. Also important is liking and subscribing. <clears throat> Alright, finally we're going to move on to copper. I'm going to use this somewhat sparingly. I want wanted the orange-brown to still show through and as a uh, less shiny addition. Um, my finger is almost literally right on top of the missing part, so... That's imp oh. <laughs> Fun fact, I forgot I added that sound effect and was legitimately startled when it happened. I have not played Metal Gear Solid. Um, you can really see the wheels turning here. It's kind of sad. Well, um, I'm just going to call that free weathering, and I guess I will be 
weathering this uh, metallic body after all. <laughs> That's what I get for attempting to plan. Um, off screen, I painted in the injury with gunmetal, and I also created a few other dents and scratches around the model. Right, now I am applying Nolan oil, which will dirty up and really help highlight all the lowered areas, such as the texture on this copper here, or the space around the rivets. Uh, Nolan oil is a really great uh, tool, especially for newer painters or painters that weren't expecting to make a super long video. Um, although I generally use Nolan oil on metal anyways. Uh, I, I don't mess with fancy non-metallic metals, <laughs> although they are cool. And the application of Nolan oil on the tail is just super oddly satisfying and I'm sorry you can't see most of it. Uh, I'd like to reiterate, this is my first video. <laughs> My hands didn't know where they needed to be. Someday they will. This wash follows the same rules as the leather washes, although since I am trying to make the model look as dirty and worn as I can, a little bit less strictly. Generally you don't want to apply washes to flat surfaces, a rule that I've broken frequently during this project. Pro tip. Fingers make an excellent tool to rub off excess wash. I'm reasonably sure the paint is non-toxic. Alright, now we're going to use Citadel Cryptek Armor Shade, uh, which I will use in the recesses, uh, the joints, just anywhere that I think water and dirt would accumulate, causing some extra wear on the model. Additionally, this is excellent for bringing out a little extra color in copper, so I will apply it over all of the copper. I applied a little too much of that wash here and on some of the other plates. And I touched, yeah, right here. I touched it up off screen. We still want the metal to look like a shiny metal. <laughs> this is only the beginning of my weathering process. I will also be applying rust and oxidation. The first step in making the copper appear oxidized is to apply a dark green ink, which will later be followed by a lighter blue-green. I also applied the dark armor shade wash over areas that I scratched and cut off-screen because I don't want to encourage people to accidentally cut themselves, which I definitely have never done. I lost the rest of the footage of me applying rust effects, so I apologize for that. Now I will use a much lighter green over top of the uh, dark green ink to give it the final oxidation color, and I am once again applying this primarily in crevices and wherever water would Cool, as the dragon sat on an abandoned battlefield. Um, it, c it can be fun and productive to add a sort of background to your models, which is what I did uh, once I had to after breaking off the antler horn earlier. So 
in my mind, this is an ancient abandoned dragon in a field of dead and abandoned weapons. Uh, to paint the eyes, I am using Vallejo Vermilion. Um, normally, I would highlight the eyes, but these eyes do not have light coming from within them. Now, the most oddly satisfying part, I think, is the application of black ink in order to create dark lines separating parts of the leather and even uh, different parts on the body of the dragon. Um, and as you can see, it looks really great. Five stars. It does, it does improve. Here we go. Uh, and when I first, when I did this model, I accidentally considered this to be the last step. But as you will see later, I was incorrect. And I had already varnished the model, but uh, we'll just pretend that didn't happen. Look at how much of a difference it makes, really separating out the different patches. So always remember, having contrast or separation between different parts of your model is what really makes it shine. I'm sorry if I flip y'all off a few times. And here's the actual last step. I am painting the rope or string that is holding the different patches together with Vallejo Dark Sand. And I'm so glad I didn't fully forget this because it makes the wings just look amazing. It's, it's the perfect final step, I think. I'm going to assume that if you're watching this video, you probably have or would like to play some form of tabletop RPG. And in that fashion, I'd like to know, what's your favorite class? Uh, post your answers down below. Incidentally, my favorite class is the Ranger, even though it sucks, but my favorite subclass is the Spellblade of um, Wizard, which honestly is a little broken, but that's a lot of fun. I must apologize to my DM for making a character with a 22 AC at level 4. I will momentarily be showing you just how much of an improvement painting these ropes is. And I think it looks really beautiful once completely done. Uh, the last thing is to make a base. I'll go over that in a future video. Um, it's not too difficult and it does really bring your minis to life. Now. I think it's about time for the glamour shots. I'd just like to thank everyone for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. 
uh, comment your favorite class or subclass, and uh, any recommendations for something you want me to paint in the future. Thank you.